Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, again, my name is Galen Weld. I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Washington, uh, and I'm super excited to talk to you today about my work uh, quantifying the governance of online communities at web scale. Um, I'm also going to be on the job market next fall, so if you have any ideas about open positions or are interested in collaboration or anything like that, I would love to, to chat with you. Right, so online communities are ubiquitous. Let's try a little lightweight audience participation here. How many people use one of these, at least one of these communities? Can I get a show of hands? Right? Exactly. Online communities are all over the place. Something like 91 or more percent of the US and in many other countries, uh, people use, use communities. And Online communities are, are awesome, right? They bring people together. They provide connection for marginalized groups. They let us access information, and they let us participate in, in new forms of culture and media as well. But they also have some real harms. Um, there's been a lot of discussion lately about things like disinformation, about cyberbullying, about political polarization, and how that might be exacerbated by social media, uh, and of course, also negative impacts on the, the mental health of young people. So these are, are real concerns. And what do we do about it, right? Communities, for the most part, all rely on some form of, of governance to increase the good parts of the communities while decreasing the bad parts of the communities. But there are so many different ways that you can choose to run an online community. And so the question that I'm going to be focusing on in my work that I'll tell you about today is how do we make data-driven decisions to best govern online communities? And my work focuses on quantifying the diversity of communities' governance practices, as well as their outcomes, in order to yield insights to make those communities better. And I take three step, uh, sort of three-step approach here. First, defining. We say that we want to make communities better, but what does better actually mean? What does it mean to make communities better? Second, assessing. What are current, current governance practices that seem most promising and are most associated with positive outcomes? And then lastly, deploying, right? None of this actually matters if we can't get these findings out into the real world and maximize our impact. Um, and this approach has, uh, has several advantages over previous approaches, right? A lot of previous work in this space focuses on specific harms, like the things I mentioned earlier, and those are really valuable areas for us to study. But in contrast, my work takes a more holistic approach, considering uh, the good things as well as the bad things. Uh, a lot of work in this space involves collecting new data sets, which is really valuable, but it's also expensive and it's slow, whereas my approach lets us leverage uh, existing as well as historical data sets. Oops. Uh, and then last, um, a lot of work in this space is qualitative, including some of my own, and qualitative work has a lot of great things about it, but it's also quite difficult to scale. So our approach here lets us generalize from thousands of, of different communities. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a lot today about Reddit, which I think is a really great place to study online communities. Why? Well, Reddit is huge. Uh, it's got more than 500 million active monthly users. And for those of you who aren't familiar with it, Reddit is composed of thousands of different communities, each of which has its own topic, its own moderators, and its own rules. And the diversity in those things uh, is something that's especially valuable for, for us to study. Um, and then lastly, relative, it's also relatively easy to access data on Reddit compared to some other platforms. Um, but more than all of those things, Reddit is also a platform that's really near to my heart. Uh, I've moderated um, a couple different subreddits on Reddit for more than eight years, uh, and the largest of which, the Photo Critique subreddit, has grown from 37,000 to close to 2 million subscribers since I started moderating it. Uh, I've also been on the Reddit Moderator Council for more than two years, and I actually started working at Reddit as a, a computational social science fellow um, in January. So in the rest of my talk today, I'm just going to go through those three steps. Um, I don't have time to go into all of the details of all of these things, so I'm just going to try and highlight some key takeaways. But again, all of this stuff I would be super excited to talk with you about more in the question and answer session or, or afterwards as well. But let's start with defining. So here, right, what does it actually mean to make online communities better? Uh, it turns out that community members' values for their own communities aren't really well understood. So what do we do? Well, we ask community members about their values. We conducted the largest to date survey of community members' values with almost 3,000 participants. And that had two parts, a qualitative survey and a quantitative survey. And for that qualitative survey, what we did was we asked people uh, open-ended free response questions. What are the things that you care about in your community? What makes a difference in your experience? Uh, and then we did some iterative categorization to come up with a taxonomy of nine different values that community members care about. So those are quality of content, uh, variety of content, the trustworthiness of that content, engagement between community members, safety of the community, inclusion of community members, 
diversity of membership, the size of the community, and then lastly, democracy and into input to decision making. So this is, of course, a really broad set of topics that are all important to people. But next, in that quantitative survey, we, um, we were able to measure how people, uh, how those values vary both within and between different communities. And we make anonymized responses for that larger survey public if you'd like to use those in your own research. So what did we find? Well, we found that there's lots of variation in values between different communities, but there are some trends that emerge here, including along lines of things like uh, the different topics of the communities. But the key takeaway here is that there's no one size fits all set of values, right? What's good for one community might not necessarily be good for another. And then we also find that there's lots of variation in values, even amongst different community members within the same community, right? People don't always agree on, on how things should be. So an example of that that I think is especially interesting, here we're looking at how much disagreement there is in change compared to the other values which are grayed out and unfortunately a little bit hard to see on this slide, so sorry about that. But um, here we see that there's, there's relative consensus on how safety should change. For the most part, people think that communities should be more safe. But where there's disagreement, in fact, there's more disagreement over the importance of safety uh, than just about any other value, right? People disagree over how important it is for safety to change. Um, and people really disagree over how safe communities currently are right now. There's almost twice as much disagreement over how safe the communities are um, than there is over any other value. And a likely explanation for that is that people who've personally had experiences that make them feel unsafe, right, aren't going to feel that those communities are as safe as people who haven't had those experiences. And so even if those folks are in the minority, we need to be careful to design governance mechanisms for communities that protect those minority members' viewpoints. Um, so what are the takeaways here? First, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to making communities better because values vary both within and between communities. Um, and because not all community members agree, we need to design governance mechanisms that protect minorities within those communities. Next, uh, assessing. What are some current governance practices that are the most promising? And so to start here, we, uh, we conducted a comp comprehensive measurement of a bunch of different moderation practices. So we developed methods for look at things like how rules are enforced, the frequency of removed content. We looked at moderator engagement, how active mods are both within and outside the communities that they moderate. We look at the moderator workload, the ratio of the volume of content within a community to the number of moderators that that community has. Uh, and then also we look at moderated recruiting practices. So are moderators recruited internally or externally from, from other places? And we combine this with a new outcome measure, um, which leverages just a, a simple intuition that is, of course, people talk about the moderators of the communities that they participate. So someone might say something like, the mods in this subreddit are useless. Or maybe they'll say something like, well, the subreddit is a cesspool of garbage, but the moderators are doing their best. Uh, and so we trained uh, a classifier to measure community members' perceptions of their moderators. So that classifier might say, mods in this sub are useless, this person is expressing a negative perception. Whereas here, the moderators are doing their best, this person might be expressing a positive perception. Uh, and our pipeline actually exceeds the performance of GPT-4 on that front while being much more affordable uh, and much more scalable. And this enables us to measure governance outcomes at a massive scale. Um, so using this pipeline, we, uh, we label every post and comment for almost 8,500 different communities over more than 18 months of data. Uh, and we collect almost 2 million different comments where people are expressing moderator perceptions. And once again, we make those data public um, if you'd like to use them in your work as well. Um, and then, again, we connect that new outcome perceptions of moderators with our data sets about moderation practices in order to identify which practices seem to be most associated with happier community members. And what did we find? Uh, well, we found that moderators seem most positively received when they enforce rules appropriately for their community, when they aren't overworked, and when they are engaged with their community both before and during their tenures. Now, if you've been paying attention, you might say, but wait, Galen, right? Content moderation isn't the only thing that matters in terms of governance. And I would say that's a very good point. Uh, I don't have time to talk about it right now, but in some other work, we also examine community affordances, things like community members voting and cross-posting different types of content. Uh, and we find that these mechanisms are also uh, helpful to reduce the visibility of, of different types of objectionable content as well. So last up, right? none of this makes a difference if we can't deploy things out and get these impacts out into the real world. So I'm going to talk to you briefly about two different ongoing projects that I'm working on that front. First, uh, a photo critique coaching system. Um, so the problem here is that providing high quality discussion and feedback is challenging. 
and our solution is that we're building a system to coach community members to improve their discussion. Um, so here's a, a screenshot of our prototype. Again, the context here is in the photo critique subreddit that I moderate. People post pictures and ask for feedback on them. And our system down here um, looks at the picture and looks at what the person wrote about the picture and uh, offers sort of suggestions and tips for how um, people might be able to deliver better feedback. Uh, the next project that I'm working on is a community dashboards pro project. Uh, so the problem here is that it's hard for moderators to make informed and data-driven decisions for their communities. Uh, and our solution is that we're building and deploying a tool to consolidate metrics from a variety of sources into a unified dashboard. So here's a mock-up of what that might look like. On the left, we're using our discussion of moderators pipeline that I mentioned earlier in order to look at different ways that people are talking about moderators and aggregate together uh, different topics. Um, and then we're also tracking trends from a, a number of different metrics, like how much content users are reporting for breaking the rules and how much content are moderators removing, so we can see how things are changing over time. So I'm going to wrap up by just briefly summarizing some of the takeaways from the different work that I've talked to you about. First, we defined what community members' values are for their communities, and we found that there's no one-size-fits-all set of values, because values vary both within and between communities, and we need to design governance mechanisms that protect minority views. Next, we assessed um, uh, what current governance practices seem most promising, and we found that communities are happiest when moderators are most, uh, most mod excuse me, communities are happiest when moderators are engaged um, and when they're not overworked. Uh, and then last, we looked at how we can get some of these things out into the real world. We looked at two tools that I'm working on for better governance. Um, thank you so very much for your time. A huge thanks also to my co-authors, my lab mates, and my advisors. This work really wouldn't be possible without them. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have, and please don't hesitate to get in touch. Thank you.